Hello, welcome back. We're going to look at uh, stocks today and uh, just talk about a few things uh, around how to calculate the return on a stock. All right, so, um, you know, stocks, you, you buy an individual sh shares in a company, uh, hopefully you diversify it or buy, you know, a particular mutual fund that buys a basket of these stocks. But the, the real the thing with stocks is... Um, Generally, the trend has been upward uh, in terms of return, right? So if we're looking at the time and return, historically, the, these returns have gone up. Now, there there is a lot of volatility. There's a lot of up and down. So, you know, sometimes it can be down here. So if your investment horizon is a little longer term, you know, you, you don't want to be forced to sell at a particular point. So you would... Uh, want to have enough money set aside if you're getting close to retirement outside of maybe your stock portfolio but certainly to get the returns um, uh, relative to other investments stocks have outperformed those other asset classes uh, uh, just in terms of you know bonds or cash or treasury bills those types of investments Okay, so again, uh, what we just want to look at today is just talk a little bit about, uh, you know, how stocks are valued. So there's a fundamental approach where analysts go through company data, they go through market data, and they come up with an estimate of what the value should be, and then look at what the current price is, and, you know, say that looks like a good deal, that looks underpriced or correctly priced, or if it's overpriced, then they might want to uh, get just avoid it. Uh, the other um, thing that uh, analysts look at is technical anal analysis. So this is more of the charts. You know, you look at the, you know, things, how things are moving, and uh, technical analysis looks at the chart. So it's essentially price movement and volume. Okay, so. Uh, technical analysis is still uh, out there, um, and it's it's still used. So uh, while it may, you know, some people may say it, you know, it's not valid. Um, it certainly uh, there's still people that do it, and I'm assuming if they keep doing it, there must be something to it. They're making money at it, or they'd stop doing it. So um, again, it's uh, you know. Uh, a preference I think probably you want you know it doesn't hurt to look, listen to both perspectives fundamental and technical um, and uh, maybe not rely too much on one or the other most of the um, analysis is fundamental though that's where you'll see the bulk of the stock analysis and technical while it's you know it's worth looking at uh, doesn't play as big a part in it Okay, so let's look at uh, stock prices. So what are we looking at when we buy a stock? Well, we're looking at the return. Okay, so what's our return going to be made up of? Well, it's going to be made up of dividends and capital appreciation or gains, we hope. Of course, it could go the other direction. We'd have a loss. So uh, either one is possible. Okay, so to look at the return on a stock, we'll just call that R. So we're looking at the dividend, and we look at a uh, dividend yield here. Okay. And so that is the dividend, and so this is the dividend expected or the next dividend, and P0 is the price today. Okay. And the other factor is simply the growth, right? We'll call that G. We, uh, you know, there's estimates of that, but growth is simply how much is the share price going to appreciate? So we have two components, the dividend yield and the growth rate. Okay, so normally you'll have some... Uh, growth rate for a particular company you know some uh, some uh, high growth firms will have very high growth rate they might not have a dividend at all so you buy um, uh, a Google or Alphabet uh, an Amazon you know there's no dividend yield there you're buying this growth in the future that's all you're buying right by paying this price that's your re entire return 
okay so for, for most purposes though you know a value company is a is a company that's somewhat established doesn't have huge growth but it has consistent growth and uh, so the growth rate then is in a percentage we'll we'll use it in decimal form here we'll look at an example so let's say we have a company we'll call it uh, BGC, big gamer company, and uh, let's say their dividend is a dollar fifty annually. And usually dividends are paid quarterly, but let's just treat this as annual. Let's say the current share price is twenty five dollars a share. And analysts are currently projecting growth for this company of 8%. All right, so what would we expect the return to be on this particular stock? So let's look at that. So expected return, well, our dividend, right, our D1 over P0, so just D1 is our next dividend, $1.50. We're going to pay $25 a share. And just make sure the growth is in decimal form. So 8% is 0 0.08. All right, so this is our dividend yield. And this is our capital gain. If it's positive, growth could be negative, so keep that in mind. But we'll assume that uh, Big Gamer... Uh, company is doing good they're growing and so let's look at how we'd get our return on this particular stock so we have a dividend yield is a dollar fifty Oops. and I'm going to divide that by the price current price today of 25 and I get uh, 0 0.06 percent I'm just going to change my decimals here so we have a few more to look at so second format oh, it should be just the way it worked out okay it is at nine which means it's got all the decimals we'll probably ever need so that was six percent right so 0 0.06 and the analysts are forecasting growth of eight percent and so we add these two together and we get an expansion Expected return on this stock of 0.14 or 14 percent. Right, so expected return on big gamer company is 14 percent. Okay, so again, the return on the stock is made up of the dividend yield and the appreciation, the growth, and the share price. So this 8 percent reflects, you know, we expect the share price to appreciate. We expect the dividend to grow as well uh, at that growth rate. All right, so that's um, the way we calculate the return on a particular stock. And uh, other things we want to look at, um, we'll look at uh, a compounded uh, average return. We'll look at that in a minute. Um, just want to talk about a couple of things to talk about. Uh, well, let's talk about earnings per share first. All right, so earnings per share is how much earnings from the companies is allocated to uh, common shareholders. So if you remember from your accounting days, you have a net income and you divide that by number of shares outstanding. Uh, get my pen working here. Okay, so there's a few other things that come into play, you know, net income you to track preferred dividends, but for our purposes, just net income, so after tax income, divide that by the number of common shares outstanding. 
that's what we're focused on and that would give us an, a dollar earnings per share right so we've got uh, earnings here of ten thousand dollars we have a thousand shares outstanding so our earnings per share then would be ten dollars per share right? So EPS, earnings per share, $10 per share. All right. So that, uh, in other words, that's the income available to on each individual share of the company in that particular period, right? So that's our earnings per share. Um, so that gets used. Another thing we want to look at is the price earnings multiple. And this is really an indication of how much we're paying in terms of the price for a dollar of earnings. Okay, so I'll just use our current example here. So we have a, a company, our big gamer company. So the current price is $25. We'll say that this was their income. Um, pretty low price earnings multiple, but anyway, that will just, for this these purposes, so we have a price of $25 a share. Want to divide that by the earnings per share, which in this case was 10. And so we'd have a price earnings multiple of 2.5 times earnings. So on the on its own, this doesn't mean a whole bunch. I mean it tells you what the market is currently paying for earnings in this company. Uh, but really to get it perspective, you have to look at the market. So you need some comparable. You know, what's the market average price earnings multiple? Uh, Generally, it, historically, it's around 16 or 17. Lately, it's been higher than that uh, into the high 20s and 30s. It'll vary by industry, too. So growth companies will have a higher PE relative to value companies with slower, stable growth. Right? So yeah, that's just a, a comparative tool. And so if you looked at this and, you know, you're paying two and a half times for earnings and, you know, the market was... Uh, you know five times well you'd say you know this stock is looks like a good value on it on this one particular parameter but again there's other considerations but you know you would look at this and say hey you know the market uh, price uh, multiple on these particular companies is five times this is only two and a half so this may be worth looking at this may be a good value all right and of course, if uh, you know if it was two times for the market, well, you'd say, well, this stock might be a little more expensive. You know, we'd want to dig into it a little bit more before we decided to do that. All right, so those are just a couple of things: earnings per share and price earnings multiple. Uh, some things to look at when you're considering particular stocks. All right, so again, the earnings per share number is used in the price earnings multiple. Okay, so this is your P0 divided by your earnings per share. All right. I guess we have that there, so that's okay. All right. Uh, one more thing we want to look at is just look at the uh, average compounding of interest. Annual, I guess. And uh, you may hear this referred to as the geometric average. And so if you come across it, that's, uh, that's what it is. But it's the average, it considers compounding. So instead of you know taking a simple average return, um, we'll just do a short example here. So we'll have to say we have returns in year one of 10%. Uh, returns in year two of 15 percent uh, and in the third year things sort of took a turn for the worst here so we had an actual loss of 10 percent and then we got back to year four and things started recovering a bit and we had a positive return of eight percent 
All right, so you could, uh, you know, you could take a simple average of these returns, you know, just add them up, divide by four in this case. You know, we have four particular ones here, so uh, you can do that pretty quickly, I guess. We have uh, the two tens, you know, we have a plus ten and a minus ten. That, that cancels out, so we got the fifteen and the eight, so we got twenty-three divided by four. And of course that doesn't work out as evenly as 24 would have, but let's let's give it a whirl here. So we can, 23 divided by 4. So 5.75%. So this is a simple average annual return. All right. A more accurate picture, though, would be to consider the impact of compounding. So to do that, we would simply take each of these in decimal form, add one to it, multiply them out, and then take the root of the number of observations. Let's just see what that looks like. So the compounded return... Okay, so again, this will be lower than the arithmetic average, simple average. So just keep that in mind. So, so here we've got 10%. So I'm just going to add one to that, 1.10. Here we've got 15%. So you note I'm multiplying these. Add one to it in decimal form and uh, multiply it. Negative uh, 10%. So I have one plus a negative 10%. So that's 0.9. And then my last year, I have 8%, so 1 plus 0 0.08. Okay, and then I multiply these all out. And then once I've done that, I take the root, fourth root of these, because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and subtract 1. Don't forget that, because we added 1 there. And this will give me my compounded annual return or the geometric average as you might have heard it called or you may hear it called that at some point. All right, so let's look at this. So I have 1.1. I'm going to multiply that by 1.15. And I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.90. And finally multiply that 1.08 times 1.08 okay so I get an answer of 122958 so I want to take the fourth root of that so how do we do that well we use the y to the x button so y to the x and 4 and I don't want the fourth power I want the fourth root so I really want the one quarter power and so I can use the invert or reciprocal button here 1 over x just above it so 0.25 so that's the fourth root of this product of these four numbers. And I get 1.053. Subtract the one from that, and then I'm left with 0.053, or 5.3%. So just note that with annual compound, with expressing it as annual compounded, uh, amounts compounding the returns for the four years and taking the average the geometric average we have a return of 5.3 percent whereas arithmetic average slightly higher at 5.75 so you'll find this is always going to be the case it's going to be higher um, with uh, simple average unless all the numbers uh, you know are, are the same then of course you would get the same but you know, so everything went up 10% a year for four years. Well, you're, you'll get 10% and 10%. Doesn't happen very often. So geometric or compounded annual return will be lower. All right, so again, hope you found this helpful, a little bit on stocks. And we'll uh, talk to you again soon. Bye for now.